Hey then, welcome to another Unreal tutorial. So in this video, I wanted to make a couple of more fixes. There's something that's been brought to my attention and it is that we have currently a frame rate dependent player movement. So that's gonna be the first thing we fix. And then somebody in the previous video asked if we'd be moving on to getting the damage for the enemy set up. So the enemy's damaging the player. And from what I remember, I think I've already done that, uh, but the person who commented this is completely right. That if we press play and get shot by one of the enemies, we for some reason don't lose any health if I could actually get hit. So uh, we're just going to double check why that's happening. So to begin with, I wanted to take this opportunity to explain what frame rate independence is, why it's important. And it's quite a hard thing sometimes to understand if you aren't familiar with it. And it's quite hard to explain without an example. So this is going to provide a really good example. Now, the first thing is that somebody's mentioned that their movement feels slow, and this is most likely because the frame rate independence isn't included, which means if their game is running slower than my game, frame rate wise, then their player will feel as though they're moving slower. So just to demonstrate this again, if we press play, what we can do is uh, we can hit the tilde key to get the command bar up and type stat FPS. So we can see if we get stats FPS and hit enter on the right hand side now we can now get the frame rate and I have a fairly solid 120 FPS and it can change and fluctuate a bit because of the recording software. And if I'm moving with this and what I'm going to do is turn off the enemy spawner. Uh, we're going to go in here and do a quick edit actually. So I'm just going to in the enemy spawner quickly just here I'm going to do a branch check. And what I want to do is promote this to a variable. I call this uh, spawn enemies. And if that is true then we'll spawn the enemies and if not then we'll just bail out just here we'll make this public so i can edit this anywhere we'll go and compile just in case you wanted to follow along and do do this as well and then in here i'm just going to untick that so now we shouldn't get any enemies which means we can play about with the movement so at the moment 120 fps this is moving quite well um, this is the kind of speed i think i wanted the, the player to move now if we do another command line what we can do is we can say t dot max fps and we can set this if we half the current frame rate, we'll set this to 60. So it's 60 FPS. You can now notice that it's actually taking longer for my player ship to reach the sides of the screen. So if we do this again, we'll half this value. So we'll get the 30 FPS. And again, this is now going to take a long time to get across. And this is because the movement of the players is being calculated as many times as the tick event is running. And obviously the tick event's running less times in a lower frame rate. So just to really confirm this once more we'll just half that again and when i see this is moving really really slowly and what you should see is ideally we'd be getting a choppy movement but it would be getting to each point at the same time and this is how we guarantee that every player will always get the same experience maybe obviously at a slightly lower frame rate if they're on a lower specification rig but they should be getting the same experience when it comes to how they can play the game how the game feels for them and that's why we really need to strive to get things to be frame rate independent Thing actually, I will turn the enemies back on quickly. We can see that the enemies are already frame rate independent, so this is why I mean they look a little bit choppy. It's not great to play a game at this frame rate, but they're still getting from each side of the screen as quickly on any frame rate. So if we turn this to uh, t dot max and we'll put this back up to 120 fps, we can see they're actually still getting to the same locations at pretty much the same time. It just looks a lot smoother now. And that's what we want to happen for the player. So if we go to the player blueprint, I think because we have our movement function, we should only need to do this once. And we already have, uh, when I was creating this originally, we've already created our delta seconds reference. And this was created uh, because I was preempting this and I was expecting to use this. And I think I just forgot a step. So if we go into the movement function, uh, we can see what we're doing here is we're timesing the movement speed by the direction that we're going. And we're using an F interp. Oh, okay, so I can see probably where my... Uh, logic went wrong here so because we're using the delta seconds there the f interp needs a delta seconds to smoothly transition between point a and point b that isn't actually being carried over to the event graph where we're doing the set actor location so the location is still frame rate dependent it's only the f interp which is the smoothing um, so like adding the acceleration and deceleration which is being uh, multiplied by delta time so all we should need to do and i haven't actually tested this ahead of time but i think all we need to do is come in here and we can pull off of this float value we'll do a float times a float and we'll plug this into the target and then we just need to use delta seconds again on the actual movement multiplication that should make this frame rate independent so we only need to do this once because we have the movement function and both of these values are being updated by the movement function 
So that should work for everything. Now, the other thing is that delta seconds is a really, really low number. It's, uh, it's a point value, so lower than one. So it's actually going to make the movement speed lower. So I'm going to need to increase this quite a lot. But just very quickly, I'm going to go into the event graph again. And on the event tick, I just want to do a print string. And let's just say we'll print the actual delta seconds. So if we compile this, we can say, okay, so the delta seconds is 0 0.008, essentially. And that's at 120 FPS. So this is how this works. It's getting the time in between frames. So in real time, it's returning the value between the current frame and the last frame. So what we should expect to see is if we hit play and we'll put the frame rate lower, so we'll make the maximum frame rate 30 this time, what we would expect to see is that the delta seconds should be a higher value because it's going to adjust so that on a game with a lower frame rate, it's doing a higher multiplication to something, which is how we get this normalization across all devices. So it's now 0.03 rather than 0.008. So we can see that all it's doing is it's just increasing the value of the delta seconds so that when we multiply it against the movement, it's always going to come back at roughly the same value. So now what we need to do is because, as I said, the movement's now not going to work. It's going to be very, very slow because we're timesing it by that really small value. We want to come in and we just want to increase our movement speed. So probably want to put this up by like 200. And there we go. So now we have the movement has been increased put the frame rate back up because that's horrible okay and now we can see that we're moving across the screen at the same rate so that has achieved exactly what we want so we've now got that to be frame rate independent we can remove the print string and just wire that back up to the delta seconds so that was the first thing we have the player's movement fixed so for the people who are saying that the ship feels a bit slow um, again as i said if your system is running this at a slightly lower frame rate it's probably because of that if that hasn't fixed it then do let me know and we'll look into it further um, and i know that someone had pointed like that i forgot to make this frame rate independent um, so as i said i think that was just because when i came in here we we're already using delta second once and i must have just skipped over doing this calculation as well because i forgot that this is purely running for the f interp so we're just going to add this in this will make this frame rate independent and as i said the next thing we're going to look at is why the enemies are not dealing damage and i think it's probably going to be as simple if we go to the enemies we just need to give them a, a damage value so if we check enemy one first and of course we did this on the projectiles so we'll go to the projectiles we'll go to the enemy one projectile and just make sure that this is uh, sending in damage which it is so it's sending in 10 damage enemy two projectile is sending in 30 damage um, so we go to the base class maybe there's something wrong in the base class okay so when we're doing the on component hit oh, okay <laughs> so we're getting the we're checking that we've hit the player but we're not actually passing that in to be the damaged actor so if you're following along exactly you may have just missed that step like i did you just need to pull off of the as uh, bp and then make that the actor which is being damaged which i seem to have forgotten to do somehow and then if we hit play again we should find that if we go into projectile oh, there we go Okay, so we're getting hit. Remember, we're also taking damage if we hit an enemy. So if we fly into an enemy, we're going to lose a lot more damage. So I think all of the damage system's working. Um, we've got the, the wrong HUD spawning in and things. But that's fine. We're going to get to that in uh, dedicated fix videos and when we start adding in the other menus. But that has the project at the moment, I think, pretty much up to date with the fixes that we needed. So we've got the frame rate independent movement and we've got damage being given by the enemies, which is just a simple miswire thing or that I forgot to wire it up. So yeah, hopefully the frame rate, the idea of frame rate independence makes a little bit more sense to those of you who may have heard of it and didn't quite understand what the concept is. Hopefully it makes sense now um, how we achieve the frame rate independence. And it's just the case that delta seconds is updated based on the frame rate. So you're going to be multiplying something by either a higher or a lower value, depending on whether your frame rate is higher or lower. And obviously that's going to normalize the values that you're multiplying them by. And uh, before I wrap this video up, actually, there's one thing I noticed whilst we were whilst i was just quickly showing the frame rate independence originally it didn't really clock the first time i saw it uh, but if we go in and actually look at this it looks as though we're spawning an infinite amount of enemies and if you remember we tried setting this up so there was a cap for the amount of normal enemies we could have on one at one time on the screen i think we said that was five so we've definitely got more than five enemies now um, so if we just double check why this is happening as well this can just be a whole video for fixing things midway through. So in the game mode, we set the enemy count, uh, which we'll be updating every time an enemy is created. And we have our max enemies. So yeah, the max enemy should be five. Uh, so if we go to our enemy spawner, just check that this is doing the correct calculations. So 
when we spawn an enemy we're making sure that the enemy count is less than max enemies and only if that's true do we go in and then spawn an enemy depending on the criteria here which is fine um, so that's all working um, which means the only thing that can possibly be is if we go to enemies and go to the enemy base and at the event begin play which i was already at okay yeah so we're we're doing the update enemy count we're just not actually adding anything to it so we should be doing that and then when they die we'll just double check that when the enemy dies it takes away a count from itself as well so we've got the local enemy killed function we need to go to the game mode enemy kill function so yeah it's taking one away which is fine so i think it just wasn't adding one so again if we press play now we should see that we'll only get expect five base enemies so one two three four and five so that should now stop spawning enemies apart from the asteroids because as i said they're just small infinite spawning enemies and if we kill all of those we should get some more come in perfect okay so that looks fine so the logic seems to be fixed there it's just that we weren't um we were not telling it to add one to the enemy count when the enemy was spawned so that's everything I wanted to go through for this video. Hopefully that's been useful. As ever, if the video has been useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps. And of course, if you'd like to be kept up to date with the latest content on the channel, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. As ever, though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.